Here we go, one complete head ready for assembly. So this has come back from the machine shop. And as you've seen from the last video, it was all cleaned out from acid dip. So it's almost looking like new in there. Nice and fresh. If I lift this up, it has had a plane on the bottom side to make it all nice and smooth and flat. And with the exhaust ports, um, had the seats done. Same with the valves. So now we will be assembling this head up with the valves and everything else, the guides and cams, obviously. Fun times. And we'll be putting on top of this. So here I have these things. I'm not sure of what this specific name is. They are all an intake. So if we compare it to exhaust ports, which you can't quite see, now you can. Um, yeah, bit of a difference. So these are pretty pretty easy to um forget about and then over time you might find that you're losing power because it's munching to your head so I'm going to go ahead and put all the exhaust ones in I'm just putting in these valve seals now I've just done a few of the Exhaust ones, it's not the last two, so basically I've just been, been putting them on my screwdriver and then putting that down inside the hole and then just drop them down and then push them on by my finger, they're not hard at all to put on, and then I'll do the same for the intake here, and then start feeding some of the valves through and putting the springs and retainers on. Valve seals are all in now. These are the intake. And then we have the exhaust. Here's the factory Toyota seals. So you can get aftermarket ones too. But I chose just to go for factory and I just know they're going to be sweet for, I don't know, another 300,000 Ks, I guess. Almost how much this engine had done. It's two, well, 270 something, 278. But this original 16 valve in the red machine is 294 and it still wasn't smoking. So it's pretty good. Just started installing some valves in my head. So I've done three intake valves already. And now I'm just about to do the two exhaust ones. So if you look at the spring closely, I don't actually take any notice when I pull them out, but one end, the spring's a bit tighter together, so that end goes down at the bottom. So yeah, I had to have a bit of a research for that, because it's like, oh crap, I totally forgot. So yeah, I'm just going to work my way through and do all these. Just got my spring compressor here, it's for a small engine one, just, just a cheapy one, but it um, does the job good. Um, so basically that goes over the valve and I'll just wind it down and then put the what they call it collets those little those little things um, to hold it in so that's it All the valves run now. Looking how they should. You can see the difference where that one, eh? Where these ones have been in the acid dipper and these ones haven't. Because I've seen the exhaust cam in to get in the machine or the seats. So they dip those at the same time. Just slipped on the TRD 0.8mm heat gasket. 
Cheers, Phil, for sorting me out. To what originally sent me the wrong one. They sent me a 16 valve one, which had little, um, yeah, gaps in there and these water gallery things, some didn't line up. So yeah, I'm back in business now. And about to slip this head on and start cranking these up to torque in the right sequence. Just set the head on the block. Just, you can see all the head studs sticking through, all the a a ARP ones. I'll just pop the washers on there. And now I'm gonna about to put some of the semi uh, grease lube stuff that comes with the ARP fasteners. So yeah, it's pretty simple. Just keep the manual and do what they say, apparently. Just talk to all these nuts up to 30 newton meters of torque as per the manual and since then i've put the white paint on each of these then i've got to do another 90 degree turn and then another 90 degree de de uh, degree turn at the back and overall it's supposed to be i think it's it's the rp 70 foot pounds of torque which is about 90 pretty much 95 newton meters of torque Looped up all around all the bell springs and retainers, and now just pin these little shims in, in the correct order. Don't mix these up. Um, so once these are in, I'm going to put the cams in and check the clearances once the little buckets are on. I've got them all number numbered here, so those are all the exhaust ones you know, of the intakes in a different container. So yeah, little shims, sit on top there, just slipping on the buckets now, they just look a bit like that, and yeah, pretty simple, um, still got some grease in there from the machine guys, um, yeah, so just slip it on, and it simply just slips in like that. I'm going to do that to the rest of those and put the shims on those ones and do the same. So my cams are in. I'm just starting on doing the clearances. I've just done the exhaust ones. I just made a big simple um, few lines representing the cams. So obviously exhaust only got two on each cylinder and the intake's got three on each cylinder. So I've been through each of them and they've all measured up pretty well. So a spec is 0 0.39 to 0 0.49. And these are all 0 0.40 apart from these two, which I'm going to swap around because they're 10 different. So I've put that one into this one. Should even it up. Um, so yeah, simple as just a feeler gauge and you just slip them in um, and see what actually slides under. So that one won't slide under. It will slide under this one for a little bit of grab. So yeah, fairly simple. Um, so you're going to do not like, two cylinders at a time. 0 0.40 again. Same with that one. Just going in tight. Yeah, it's all right now. Um, so yeah, pretty simple. So I'll do the same for the intake and measure the same. Slightly different measurements for that for clearance. But hopefully it's all good because this is as it was from factory. I pulled all these out and put them in individual compartments in my plastic box so they wouldn't get mixed up. So hopefully the factory specs good and I can just bolt these in for good. Just pulled off the exhaust cam so I'm basically just going to Pull this out carefully. Shims in there still. Um, I'll just place this down. And then pull this one out. Shims in there still. And we're just going to swap these around. So I put this one into this one here and the other one into this one. Shims are swapped around now. So they don't look any different, just the thickness. And we will just swap these back in. So, 
and then pop the cam back in and torque it up to spec and that will be that done the intake side has measured up all within spec as I would have imagined because I haven't touched that side so just basically got to reseal on the leads for the final um, seal up and same from this one and at the front here and put the new seals in we the cam gear off as well and put the new seal in there Cams are all in for good now, all torqued up to spec and I've just added the bearing, uh, yeah, the seals I should say and sealed in the sides of these on each one and the rear one there only a little dab because you don't want it screwing out everywhere so yeah, I'm going to put the cam gears on next and torque those up to spec and move on to the next thing to do so last night I've been busy, just working away, didn't really video much of it but basically just been putting all the accessories on, got the tying belt on all the valve um, clearances are sweet now the alternator, all these pulleys and just about to put the cover on here, and put the crank pulley on, and put the water pump pulley on and you've got the old engine mount Power steering, obviously, tensioner down there. Got the VVT solenoid put in. This is brand new, by the way. Same with this is brand new. Put on not so long before I pulled the engine out. Put this on. Put the thermostat housing on. Put the ISCV on. And this water pipe. So yeah, pretty much, pretty much ready to yeah put all the accessory pulleys on and the covers. Probably just going to leave the cam cover off for the time being and maybe put something over top. Because I found last time when I was had the strop on it, it started to rub against the cover. So I don't want to damage all the paint and all that. So that's me. And just outside I've been cleaning the throttle body intake manifold. Cleaning it out, getting all the yuck black stuff out of it. It's amazing all the factory casts putting in there. And yeah, just cleaning out these. I've just got WD-40 soaking in there at the moment. Just so it comes off easy. I have my wire wheel and my drill again. Clean those intake ports out on the manifold. So my engine's pretty much all done now, all the covers are on, just don't have the top cover on uh, and no manifolds. So I've just started work on my intake manifold, cleaned it all out today, getting a bit of a scrub out and I'm about to polish it all up and just um, port match the bottom of this side of the manifold. I've actually changed what I was going to do. I was originally going to port match these out to the size of this, but since doing some research, this actually acts as like a venturi effect. So if you don't know what that is, get a bit of a Google or YouTube, see how wide it is, and then it goes quite tight. It actually speeds up the airflow into the head. So if I opened that up, being an NA engine, it probably would slow the air speed down. Whereas if it was turbo, it probably wouldn't have an issue because it would be forced in there anyway. So that's lucky I found that out. So I'm just going to just take the bottoms down a little bit to the little line there where the gasket is and then call it a day. Um, yeah, so polish that up and then each of these all bodies I'm just going to clean them right up inside get my little Dremel tool and get the rest of that black crap off because that was um, yeah, real hard to get off stubborn got four of those all pulled apart sort of, not right apart but just separated so 
same deal. So yeah, I'm just going to get my little Dremel tool, wherever it is, somewhere around, over here. And got like little wheels on there. And clean it up. So just to run down on the intake manifold, all I've done is sort of uh, clean it up. Clean up with these little things I was doing the head with. So that's like a 240 grit. It's just, just to smooth out, not mirror finish or anything, but take out some of the casting imperfections. And I've just taken the bottom of that off to match the gasket. I've left the top to do that venturi effect as I was talking about in the previous little clip. And I've just cleaned out all these throttle bodies the best I can on the inside. Um, and spray them out with brake cleaner just to get all the crap out. It's still dripping muck out. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to let these dry and then bolt these back on. And that's pretty much all I'm going to do for the intake manifold. Actually reusing these gaskets because my gasket kit, which is a full head and everything, comes with this, like a new one of those, and a new one for the, or the trumpets and all that. But no um, I to B gaskets. But that's, um, it's alright, it's not like it's holding fluids or anything. It should seal up pretty quick, pretty alright. So that's my plan, and then I can bolt it onto the head, and that should be pretty much it. Good look at taking off the engine stand and putting the clutch and flywheel on, and dropping it in the hole, and put the gearbox on. Just bolt my manifold on. I guess you usually don't see it like this, because usually you have the ITBs bolted to it, but this is what, what it looks like. Um, that's a better shot of the old light horn. So that gives you a bit of a sight of what it actually looks like going down on the old intake runners. And the, the port match the front there of the, um, yeah, going into the head. Here we have it. It's pretty much all together. Just temporarily put the manifold on and the cover on. Let's just see what it looks like. Well, it's like this last time, but I've forgotten. It's been a long time. It's all looking pretty smick, I should say. Pretty tidy. Got the stacks on. So these just temporarily bolted on. Just check out the fitment. Nice clearance between each one. So I'm still waiting for my injectors to come back. Um, yes, but everything else is pretty good. Focusing. There we go. 